Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. This is Sketch Monkey here. I'm here at Rev Hard Motors in Denver to have a look at something very unique here in the US. This, what we have here, is Japanese royalty. It's all about the passengers in this car. This is a 1997 Toyota Century, and it was used in Japan up until 2013 in this design to drive around all the royalties that you have in Japan. And this, as you can see, has these aftermarket wheels on it. I think it looks fantastic in the proportions of this classic styling with the luxurious boxes that we have in the front, in the middle, and in the rear. So what we're gonna do in this video is have a look at this super cool design, the front end, which feels very classic, but it also feels a lot uh, that it was inspired a lot by the Germans of the time, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Then we're going to have a look at the side view and the rear, and last but not least, we're going to have to have a look at this interior, because everything in here is in Japanese. So I'm not sure, I'm going to have to fiddle around with the controls and try to figure everything out, but it's all about the passengers in this car, and they did some genius solutions to maximize the interior space off this specific car and then we're gonna take this V12 Toyota, Jap Japan's only V12, we're gonna take it out for a drive and I'm gonna show you just how smooth this thing is. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of this beast of a Toyota that is the 1997 Toyota Century V12. You have a naturally aspirated 5 liter V12 putting out 290 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It came both with a 4 speed and a 6 speed automatic transmission. The power is sent to the rear wheels and 0 to 60 was done in 7.5 seconds. The price when this was new was around $100,000. So, starting with the front end design of the 1997 Toyota Century, it's really interesting to think about this because this design has a mix of a lot of design philosophies and styles mixed into one car. And keep in mind that this was in production in this shape from 1997 all the way up to 2013. And it is one of the smoothest riding cars I've ever driven. And we're gonna talk more about that when we get to the driving section. But have a look at this layout here. This is what I'm talking about. Very typical German layout, in my opinion, with this waterfall design for the grill in the middle. And then you have almost Mercedes-like, the W140S class style or inspiration for the top part of the half of the front end. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of a design that you see when you want to when we want to build a uh, video game, a, a car game, and you want to have a generic looking luxury sedan. This styling would be perfect for that type of car. It has these very nice proportions to it, classic luxury proportions all around and in the graphics as well. And down here, you can see that we have openings in the middle section surrounded by this chrome trim. And we also have the big grill being completely open as well. The indicator lights doesn't sit up here in the headlights. They sit all the way down here, which is a pretty unique feature and all, pretty common for Japanese cars. You have that in the Skyline R33 as well, for example. Overall, I love the proportions of this thing. It has this presence to it. And you do know when you see this pulling up, you do know that it's someone important inside. Now, since this is a pretty special uh, Toyota, you don't really have any Toyota badges anywhere on this car. Instead, you do have this golden bird in the middle and up top on the hood, you do have a golden C, of course, standing for the model name Century. But having a look at the straight front view, I really think this looks cool and I do think that if we just updated a few key graphics on this car, it would make a very good looking 2023 model here. So I'm gonna make a quick redesign of this here and see what that could turn out like. Coming around to the side view of the 1997 Toyota Century, and this is probably my favorite view of this car, because I, I'm not sure if you've uh, seen it in my previous videos, but when I talk about proportions of cars, I feel like everything is merging together, specifically now that we have a coupe SUVs, proportions related to the specific segment of what the car is, is becoming blurred, but not in this case. If you want to learn how to sketch cars, this design right here of the 1997 Toyota Century would probably be a good idea to start because you have three separated boxes right here. You have box number one being this very long hood. It needs to be big because we're housing a V12. Remember, the only Japanese V12 car ever. And then you have the box right here being the greenhouse. Thick C-pillar, very thick, creating this luxurious feel in the rear end. And then we have the box number three being the big trunk that doesn't have any sort of coupe-like 
style in the rear end. This is a proper luxury sedan and it shows in the proportions as well. Now, I'm not sure if this specific car has been lowered. It feels a little low here. Not sure if the Japanese royalties uh, would like to have it this low going through town in Tokyo, but this, the stance of this thing is just perfect with this walled 20 inch wheels, 235 millimeter wide tires all around. And I think these wheels, they suit this car so well because we have the silver in, on the faces of the wheel and then on the sides of the spokes, you have the white color that we, see, that we have in the body as well, coming back inside of the wheels. So very nice touch and it doesn't feel overkill, overkill. This is one of these perfectly modified cars that adds to the design instead of ruining in it. Now, if you look at some of the trim pieces here, you can see that we have a lot of chrome going on in the 1997 century, but the quality, the build quality of this car is just incredible. I don't think a lot of modern cars today in 2023 have these precise cut lines that we have in this century and how every single piece lines up exactly with the piece that's next to it. It's absolutely beautifully done. And in this case, I actually think that the chrome that we have at the very bottom in the side skirt and also down here in the bumper, this is what I'm talking about. It feels, when we look at the rear view, you're gonna see that this looks almost like a 70s, uh, early 80s American car, but it was built up until 2023. And just have a look at how beautifully integrated these classic door handles are, very nice to use. And I'm, it's refreshing to see new cars, sort of new cars, still having this classic integration of details such as the door handles. Now, before we jump in and look at the rear view of this car, let's just take one more look at the side view because I absolutely love what's going on here with this sharp uh, roof line going into this thick C-pillar, then the trunk shooting out in the back and you have the hood shooting out in the front end. I think it's a beautiful car, this thing, specifically, as I said, with these wheels. And then we have this little badge here that says C for the century, and you have the V12 badge under or uh, spelling underneath that as well, just to let people know that this is, in fact, a V12. Now, coming around to the rear end design of the 1997 Toyota Century, and <laughs> this again, looking at the graphic layouts here, I think, again, if we just modernize a couple of touches, to this design, it would make a stunning 2023 or 2024 model. We do have this very straight horizontal graphics in the rear, which emphasizes the width. I also like that we have the century spelled out in the rear, adding some of that elegance and luxury to this car. These are all separated pieces that's been stuck onto the trunk of this car. This trunk itself is soft closing, so you have that luxury added to this car as well. And it is a heavy car, and it's not very powerful. We're going to talk more about that when we drive this car. This is all about the comfort and the smoothness of the ride. Let's talk about some of the graphic features here. You do have the indicator light sitting in a pretty traditional spot here in uh, comparison to the front end where it sits down low. Then you have the brake lights and you do have some reflector lights here as well with the reverse lights being integrated right here in this silver piece. Then coming back, we don't see any Toyota badges back here either. Not in the front and not on the side and not in the rear. Instead, we still have this uh, golden bird in the middle, which I believe has some important meaning in Japan. I'm not entirely sure what that would be. No exhaust pipes in the lower section. I think that is how this should be done. Very clean and stylish in the rear end with no unnecessary features to ruin the gracefulness of this car. Now, looking at the Century from a straight rear view, and you can still get this presence that you get in the front end. I do like this line here that goes on the trunk. The same line comes in from the shoulder line and dips in the same area into this corner. This is just a beautiful touch that still has this elegance to it that we're looking for in a car like this. And then you have a second shoulder line coming back here. You can barely see it from the rear view, but it creates a nice big chamfer across this area of the rear end. Further down, I'm not sure if you can see the dual exhaust, but they are sticking out down here underneath the car. Welcome to the absolutely stunning interior of the 1997 Toyota Century. And the first thing that struck me when I got in here is this smell. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it, the thing that it does, it reminds me when I was traveling all around Asia and how pretty much every single car has a similar smell to it. And this has that exact smell to it. I haven't smelled it in 20 
years almost and it's nice to have that back in uh, in a car so let's fire this up because it's not gonna be loud this is one of the smoothest v12s you're ever going to experience it's so smooth the ride is very comfortable even on these 20 inch wheels and it just said something in japanese and it's showing something here on the display i'm not sure what it says unfortunately i don't know japanese But what I'm going to do here is just talk about this interior and what I think about this design. Because as I said, this was in production up until 2013. And yes, the interior is starting to show its age. And since this is, of course, a Japanese domestic market car, meaning that the steering wheel is on the right side. And it feels very strange driving this car. The last time I drove a right-hand drive car was when me and my friend rented a camper van in australia and we drove from brisbane to uh, melbourne in a very cheap camper van <laughs> with a manual transmission that was the last time so it's going to be an inter interesting driving experience we have this big dash up top so let's start up top and move our way down in this car big leather wrap dash up top that stretches all the way across the entire length of the car moving further down you can see the integrations of these vents super simple they all have the same design and they all have this very classic elegant look to it as it should and it, it feels like it has a good connection to the exterior design super easy to use then you have this screen in the middle which i have no idea how to use this and i apologize for that but it looks like we do have a tv here if we want to we have a bunch of different settings uh japanese buttons here and it's not the biggest screen but honestly i don't care this is a car that you just want to go and drive or even better be a passenger in which we're going to talk about in a minute when we look at the back seats then we have the gauge cluster super simple layout here as well you don't even have a tachometer in this car instead you have a digital speedometer right in the middle and then you have the uh, temp gauge to the right side and the fuel gauge to the left and that's pretty much all you're getting in this rectangular integration of the gauge cluster and everything in here is power adjustable you have a power adjustable steering wheel you can move it up and down or in and out to, to get your perfect driving position moving into this center console you do have the AC controls here fortunately a lot of these uh, buttons here have some sort of symbols on them so I can kind of figure out what they're doing this is the AC on and off then you have this fan speed right here you have the temperature on the right side being in Celsius, of course. Further down, you do have the uh, old school deck, which is which has a cassette player in it. And of course, it does have all their normal radio settings and the volume control. Feels very nice, this thing. It has some nice weight to it. However, it doesn't sound like it has the best sound system, which is totally fine for this car. You have the presets of the radio settings down here. Moving further down, look at how gorgeous this wood is in this Toyota Century. This has to be proper wood. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't uh, do anything else in the top of the line Toyota that they were building in 2013 or 2007 in this case. Beautifully done. You do have a little storage compartment down here. You can fold these out. I'm not sure what they do though. Oh, so if you fold this piece down, this area becomes two cup holders. That's a pretty clever integration of cup holders that I've never seen before. Further back, you do have the gear selector, which is pretty standard. There's no reverse camera here, but as you can hear, when you put it in the reverse, it sounds almost like a semi-truck backing up. You definitely have a warning sound that you are in reverse. So let's put it back in the park. You have traction control on and off. You have the dry modes here. So you have snow mode. It says that the traction control is now uh, optimized for snow. So you have a couple of different settings for the traction control below the traction control off button and if you're not happy with the passenger seat position you have the buttons right here in addition to the seat uh, uh, buttons on the seat itself so if you feel like you need better visibility and a person is taking up too much space in the passenger seat all you got to do is just use these buttons here to move that seat back and forth so you can tilt it tilt to the uh, backrest back and forth as well very cool i it's the same thing here i haven't seen buttons for that located right here on the driver's seat then you have this slider with a small compartment underneath pretty small compartment you can fit a couple of markers in here and a few big pens but that's pretty much it so let's cover this back up the armrest itself is very comfortable and this piece 
might be annoying after a while when you're driving because there's no way of moving this thing. You might wonder what this is. I'm gonna let you know about that when we look at the back seat in just a minute. Moving on to the steering wheel. This looks like a pretty traditional steering wheel from this era of Toyota, but you don't have, again, no Toyota logos in here. Instead, you have this uh, golden logo coming back that we also have on the key itself. And since this is a JDM car, when you jump into one, you want to have the indicator. Naturally, what, what you're going to go for is having the indicators on the left side of the steering wheel, because that's what and we're used to here. But in this case, the indicator stock is located on the right side. So that's gonna take some getting used to for sure when we go out and drive this car. Now, this is one cool button that you have on the left side of the steering wheel. This is for the curtains in the back. And the design of these curtains definitely look pretty vintage to me. But it's very cool you can control the rear curtain by using these buttons on the left side of the steering wheel. On the right side, you do have the controls for the mirrors to adjust those. In this case, we don't have the mirrors that we have on the on some centuries where they're located, mounted onto the, uh, the fenders in front, which I think looks so much cooler than just having the side mirrors mounted in a very traditional place right here on the door. But if you manage to find one a century with the uh, fender mounted mirrors, that's gonna cost you a lot more because those are a lot more desirable than these ones. It still looks good. Now let's look at these seats and this passenger seat might look like your average pretty comfortable luxury seat. It's super soft and comfortable. It feels like I'm sitting in a couch, but this has some special features to it. Again, coming back to when we look at the back seat. Other than that, it looks pretty standard, but as I said, super comfortable seats. Up top, we don't have any sort of sunroof, which is totally fine by me. And looking at these doors, we have some interesting integrations of the uh, window control. So you have this control being the passenger side, and then this being the driver's side. Then you have the rear uh, window controls here as well. But I do like the styling of the door with this wood insert. Then of course you have your ashtray and your cigarette lighter right here in the door. But look at this door handle and how this works. So whenever you want to open the door, it's not a very traditional looking handle for the door itself, but it's still a very good design because you're gonna rest your hand here. The way you open the door is just pulling this thing up and it's very easy to open this door. And it also has a super nice, it feels heavy and solid feels quality, this door. Last but not least, we do have a proper sized glove box in here with a DVD player or a CD player integrated in the glove box itself. So with that said, the main part about this interior is definitely the rear seat. So let's jump in there and let me show you what that is all about. All right, guys, jumping in. Oh, it's so comfortable back here. Just look at this bounce in these back seats and everything in here looks a very high quality. I feel like Toyota really pushed themselves to create this car and it is so cozy back here. As I said, this is a car that you just want to lounge in and just relax and have your driver take you for a drive. But let's have a look at some of the features here that's very unique to this car. So we do have a TV in the center and this is why you can't fold this front piece down even though it might bother you if you're a little wider because it's gonna hit your shoulders when you're driving. But I think it's worth it, specifically if you're a passenger, because this is one of the coolest setups of a center console in a passenger seat that I've ever seen. You do have two pretty solid cup holders here and some storage space. And in addition, you also have a holder for the remote control that tilts upwards. So it's easily accessible right here with this TV and the two vents up top looking beautifully integrated inside of this wood material up top. Further down, you do have some storage underneath here, a slider that comes out and you also have more storage down at the very bottom of the center console. Very luxurious and comfortable back here. And this is a car that still today feels extremely comfortable in the back seat. Now we can fold this up and here you have like a launch pad of buttons. So it looks like a serious control panel. This is where you adjust all the seat settings. So you can slide this all the way forward if you want to. You can slide it up and down and have the exact position that you want back here with all these buttons up top. But the coolest thing that I wish more cars today would implement in their cars, have a look at this piece. So you can fold this backrest of the passenger seat in front of you down. And what this does, it allows you to stretch your legs out completely and turn this into a super luxurious and comfortable place. 
just chill out and stretch out your legs. And this is what I'm talking about, this car being designed around the passengers. It feels like they didn't really care about the driver and the front passenger too much. Another detail that shows that is that only soft closed doors are the rear doors. The front doors don't have soft clothes inside of them. It's only installed on the rear doors. Now, since this was a car to uh, drive around royalties and very important people in Japan, they included a uh, tape recorder for you. So this is what you hit. You hit record when you have very important business meetings back here in the back seat. And it all actually says Century on this. So this is a legit Toyota product that they included in the Century. Very cool piece. Alright guys, it is that time. We're taking the Toyota Century for a drive. And it is weird uh, sitting on this side of the, of the car on the right side. But uh, I remember when I was in uh, Australia and we got this camper van, it took about two, three hours to get used to it. So you, you get used to it pretty fast. And it also helps that all the other traffic is on the other side in Australia as well. But talking about this car, it is such a beautiful interior. And this V12, oh, look at that. I <laughs> just turned on the wipers when I want to turn on the indicators because you're on the right side of the steering wheel, which is, as a, again, something that you definitely need to get used to. It's going to take a while. But as I said, this car is, is definitely not about speed. You have a 5-liter naturally aspirated V12 putting out 290 horsepower. And zero to 60 in a five liter V12 is around seven and a half seconds. But the ride of this thing, it is absolutely fantastic. It is so smooth. And that is what it's all about. It's about having the passengers comfortable, even if you're stepping on it. So let's step on it real quick here. And let's see what happens. Not a lot, to be honest, <laughs> it's, it's not fast. It is not a fast car, but you feel like you're, you're an important person when you're driving this. You can barely feel any vibration from the engine at all. or You can't even hear it. If you're not really flooring it, it's completely quiet. This car, when it was new, it cost around $100,000, which I think for everything you get in here, it feels like a pretty good deal to me. And the thing I really love about the Toyota Century is that, as I said, they started building this in 2007. They did some minor, minor upgrades to it over the years. For example, added Xenon uh, headlights, which look very nice. And those are the exact, you know, upgrades that I would do to this car, because I think this design, if you just put some new graphics on it, for example, the headlights and the taillights, and sort of aftermarket wheels, a little bit bigger wheels, like we have here, it just looks like a proper luxury sedan, the exact way you want them to look, at least in my opinion. That's why I wanted to make a quick redesign of this, to just see what these proportions would look like with some modernized graphics on top of it. This smell in here though is very special. You know when you have memories, you know you have, you, you've done stuff, you've been traveling uh, places, and smells can really um, fire up memories that you completely forgot about. And that's what this car does to me. It really reminds me of the time I was traveling in Asia because of this simple smell that we have in this car. It's not a bad smell at all. It smells really nice. I'm not sure what it is about the cars down there that makes them smell this good. So this is an absolutely fantastic driving experience. It's, it's a rough road here, Denver roads. They're not good, but this suspension really eats a lot of it up. And keep in mind that we do have the aftermarket 20 inch wheels on here and it's still very, very comfortable. These seats, they're definitely in the same league as some of the most comfortable seats I've ever been in. That is a 2001 Volvo S60 or a V70. They're so soft, these seats. It feels very nice. So I'm flooring it right now and we're barely picking up speed. And for some reason, I don't think this is a car that should be extremely fast. 
because it would kind of ruin the ride and the, you know, you, you, it's not jerky at all. It's so smooth in its power delivery. 290 horsepower from a five liter V V12. And the speedometer is also in kilometers per hour, so it feels like we're going faster than we are. So I guess that's a good thing. Just beautiful. I'm glad that we're starting to import. Uh, I mean, we've been doing it for a while. Like we have this 25 year rule before you can import cars from Japan. And uh, I want to see more cars like this here because these are very, very special cars and they feel completely different from what you have uh, in the domestic market here in the US. I want to say huge thanks to Rev Hard Motors here in uh, Denver for providing this absolutely beautiful, stunning 1997 Toyota Century for me to review for you guys today. If you're interested in JDM cars, make sure you go and check them out at RevHardMotors.com. I'm going to link that down in the description. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.